This video is going to contain some tips on advanced plotting. It's going to be an incomplete video on advanced plotting because it's almost an endless array of options you have when you get into trying to make really sophisticated plots. But uh, the first three bullet points here, I try to give you some general tips that you should keep in mind when trying to make very sophisticated plots. The first of my general tips is Remember, with ggplot, what we're trying to do is add together multiple layers. And by adding together multiple layers, what we're actually doing is adding information onto the plot. And that's really what advanced plotting comes down to, is adding information to a plot while not overwhelming your viewer. You want to offer as much information as possible, but you don't want to overwhelm your audience. So we'll figure out how to add multiple layers to plots. I've already started showing you that in that you have to add a geometry layer to a ggplot plot in order to get anything onto the plot. But what I think, I think the point of this video is going to be that you can just keep on adding multiple and multiple layers. As long as you just put plus signs in between those geometries, then you can just keep on adding stuff to it. It's easy to get too much information on there, but there is a happy medium somewhere, and I hope we can find that. Another general tip for advanced plotting is our goal is specifically to compare multiple groups. Doesn't really need to be possessive there, so let's just fix that. Our goal is to make side-by-side -side comparisons across different groups, across different levels of a factor variable. So what you really got to do is keep in mind what levels of which factor variable are you really trying to most immediately compare. And you want to put those two levels or three or four or however many levels immediately next to each other as best you can. Um, I'll try to show you exactly what I mean with an example for the second bullet point there. Uh, the third general tip for advanced plotting that I have is recognizing when to blend variable types. This is really hard to do at an early stage in your statistics career. I recognize that. I know that. Nonetheless, you should be able to, to some degree, recognize when you have a numeric variable that only has a very small number of levels. Now, that's kind of already language blending the two, th two variable types between categorical and numeric, because never before have I said numeric variables have levels. I've always only said categorical variables have levels. But my point is, if you have a numeric variable with only a small number of values, you can treat them as if they are levels of that numeric, but blending it with a categoric type variable. And again, my example in R using the tooth growth data set is really going to try to highlight all of these three points in one plot. Um, I will build to it as we go. So let's just jump into R Studio. We, as always, are going to load the library ggplot2, and I'm just going to print out the first six rows of the data set tooth growth so we can remember what it is we're looking at. So we have lengths of guinea pigs' teeth as they grow based on supplements of vitamin C. There is two levels of the categorical variable SUP, standing for supplement, uh, different ways to give the guinea pigs vitamin C. And then there is doses of those supplements. Now what's particularly interesting about the variable dose is that if you only look at the unique values, despite the fact that dose is numeric, you can add together doses to get a bigger dose, there's only three values that dose takes on. So it's like you can treat dose as a factor or categorical variable. And that's the third data point, uh, third bullet point I, of my advanced plotting tips. We'll keep that in mind as we go. So ggplot, you pass in the data set you want to make a plot of, and then in the aesthetic. Now, what we're really trying to do is compare the different supplements 
by the lengths. So we're going to do something like this to start. Just make two columns of points to compare the means and standard deviations of the different supplements lengths. Now, if you pay real close attention, I'm already beginning to blend together different variable types because supplement is in fact a categorical variable, but I've plotted supplement on the x-axis as if it was numeric. That's really just to kind of get you into what this advanced plot is going to be. So um, that's my first example of an advanced plot, but I think part of the issue is you'd really like to see all those points not stacked up immediately. So you can jitter them a little bit, and I'm specifying a width of the um, geometry jitter, just to say don't jitter it too much. I don't want the points across those levels of supplement to be overlapping. Okay, but we recognize in this plot that we also have doses built into this. So really, something we'd like to do is treat dose as a categorical variable and create new subplots with the layer facet wrap. New subplots based on the levels, remember that's me blending together the variable types, the levels of the variable dose. And so now what you see here is for each dose level, we compare immediately the thing of interest, the orange juice to the vitamin C. And for dose level one, we compare the orange juice to the vitamin C. And for dose level two, we compare orange juice to vitamin C. We are putting together the main treatment of interest, the supplement, right next to each other within each dose level. That's my, I believe it was my second bullet point. We are specifically comparing the groups of interest here, supplements showing up next to each other within each dose level. Okay, so we're working our way all the way back to adding multiple layers together. Look, all I'm doing is adding this layer together and adding a new uh, layer of information onto this plot. Okay, let me clear all this because this plot's going to start getting a little bit overwhelming. And so I want to keep it clean for what it is we're looking at for each new plot we see. So let's try to add a little bit more. Here, before facet wrap, I'm going to add a violin plot because I think that's going to be particularly interesting to see how those observations as points dictate the shape, the distribution within each dose level and for each supplement. Now that's a little frustrating because the violin plot is a solid white background, so it's kind of hidden my points. So the way you can fix that is to specify a fill as NA. So that's saying like, don't fill in the violin plots. Let them be blank so you can see the points behind them. Okay, that seems pretty good. One thing I like to do is actually shade the points themselves because the points are informative, but really what's informative is the violin plots, the distribution of the uh, dose level for each supplement. So I like to kind of fade the points into the background by setting this alpha value. Alpha takes a numeric value between 0 and 1. 0 is the points are completely transparent, and 1 is exactly as we had them before. So the default is alpha equals 1. Okay, next step, adding more layers to this plot. It would be good if we rewrote the x and y axis labels. There is a a uh, layer we can add to ggplot plots named labs, and you just specify on the x-axis, we'll put the supplement. So that will replace the word sup down here. 
with supplement or whatever else we put inside quotes there. On the y-axis, we're going to put in length. And now I'm just going to guess that the length is in millimeters for guinea pig's teeth, but I don't actually know that. The help file for this data set does not actually tell us what units for the guinea pig's teeth length are. It's a little frustrating, but I'm pretty sure millimeters is a reasonable guess. OK, let's try one more thing. My personal preference for plots is to modify the plot with a specific theme. I prefer the minimal theme. And it basically takes away as much ink as possible from the plot in order to focus in on the actual information bearing components of the plot. The information bearing components of the plot are the points and the violins. Those are the things that actually contain information about this plot. And I argue here with one, two, three, four, five layers of information. This is a fairly sophisticated and advanced plot. We have subplots based on each dose level. And we have the immediate comparisons that we want next to each other. We've added all this together in layers that can specify for us various components of this plot. I encourage you to go use the Penguins data set that I explained in an earlier video or the Finches data set to try to help you make some sort of sophisticated advanced plot. It's not always easy to come up with plots this informative. So if you don't get it off the first go, by all means, please visit me in office hours. Please post a message up on Piazza. This can take a while to make a plot that carries as much information as I'm going to argue a plot like this does. I'll be honest, before this video, uh, before I started recording this video, I probably spent 10 minutes thinking through this data set and how to make this plot before. And that's 10 minutes with a data set I have seen in this class repeatedly throughout the semesters. So by all means, a 20 minute session in R with you kind of fiddling around and exploring, what are my options in the labels for the um, layer labs. Remember, question mark labs will pull up the help file for you and immediately said good labels are critical for making your plots accessible to a wider audience. And all the way down here in the examples at the very bottom of the help file are some clever ways for you to use the labs layer uh, productively. It takes some time to put these together. Be patient. If you are starting to get frustrated, reach out. You don't want to be too angry at R. That will make the semester very difficult for you. So please do reach out, office hours on Zoom or Piazza.